Westlake in Hangzhou has always been a good place with beautiful scenery and bustling crowds. On this day, it was early spring in March, the willow branches by the West Lake were tender green, the peach blossoms were bright red, and there were many people coming from all directions to West Lake for sightseeing, especially lively around the broken bridge. The immortal Lu Dongbin happened to pass by West Lake from the sky. Seeing the prosperous and prosperous scene on the ground, he was very interested and decided to go sightseeing. So with a shake of his body, he turned into an old man with white hair and over the age of 60, carrying shoulder poles and staggering to Westlake to sell soup circles to join in the fun. Lu Dongbin rested his shoulder pole under a big willow tree by the broken bridge. He saw the soup circles and the money fluttering up one by one, so he opened the door and shouted, selling soup circles, selling soup circles. A big soup circle costs one copper coin for three, and a small soup circle costs three copper coins for one. When people heard Lu Dongbin's call, they all laughed and gathered around to watch. Someone said, old man, you called it wrong. Hurry up and switch the prices of the big soup circle and the small soup circle. But Lu Dongbin didn't listen and kept selling as usual. Seeing that the big soup circles were cheap, everyone took out money and scrambled to buy them. One bowl for you and one bowl for me. After a while, the big soup circles and the money were all fished out, leaving only one small soup circle rolling up and down in the boiling water. At this time, a man in his forties carrying a three-year-old child also squeezed into the crowd. The child saw others eating soup circles and cried for them. The man loved his son, so he reluctantly took out three copper coins to buy the small soup circle from Lu Dongbin. The child happily opened his little mouth, ready to eat, but the soup circle seemed to come alive and suddenly drilled into his little mouth and slid into his belly. Unexpectedly, after the child ate the soup circle and returned home, he did not eat anything for three days and three nights. But he didn't seem sick, jumping and hopping around, in good spirits. How can a person not eat? The father was scared to death. He carried the child straight to the broken bridge to find the old man who sold the soup circles to find out what was going on. Lu Dongbin heard it and laughed loudly. He took the child, unexpectedly grabbed his feet upside down, and shouted, Come out! The small soup circle that had been swallowed three days ago actually spit out from the little mouth and fell into the west lake from the broken bridge. A white snake and a tortoise practicing under the broken bridge saw a small soup circle falling down and scrambled to eat it. Because the white snake swam fast, it stretched out its head, opened its mouth, and swallowed it with a gulping sound. The tortoise could not eat the soup circle and quarreled with the white snake. The white snake and the tortoise had practiced for 500 years, and their skills were originally about the same. The soup circle swallowed by the white snake was a fairy product, which added 500 years of Taoism. The tortoise could not beat the white snake and fled to the west in a hurry. Early the next morning, a cloud of white smoke emerged from the edge of the broken bridge. The white snake turned into a young girl dressed in white clothes, like a lotus flower just out of the water. She gave herself a name, called by Sujin. On the Queen Mother's birthday, immortals from all over went to attend the Peach Blossom meeting to wish the Queen Mother a long life. By Sujin, a true immortal who has practiced for thousands of years, also followed the immortals to heaven. The immortals attending the meeting crowded the huge Lingxiao Palace. The fairy maidens held bright red peach blossoms and played pleasant fairy music. The queen mother came out to greet the guests and looked closely at Bai Sujin, feeling unfamiliar. The queen mother asked the immortal Nanji Xinwang, Who is that pretty girl? Nanji Xinwang stroked his white beard and pointed at Lu Dongbin with a smile, saying, This matter should be explained by him to understand. Lu Dongbin looked at Bai Sujin, unable to remember where he had seen her before, and was stunned. Nanji Xinwen then told the story of Lu Dongbin selling soup circles at the broken bridge from beginning to end, making the immortals laugh loudly. Xinwen said Bai Sujin quite embarrassed, but also evoked a pile of her heart. How she wanted to thank the child who spit soup ring to her to eat ah. After the peach blossom meeting, Bai Sujin went out of the South Heaven Gate and caught up with Nanji Xinwang, asking, Old Immortal, please tell me where the child who spit out the soup circle is. I want to see him. Nanji Xinwang couldn't help laughing loudly and said, Do you think he is still a child? You came to heaven for a banquet, and eighteen years have passed in the mortal world. That child has now grown into a young man. 
Go to the West Lake, the tallest and shortest one, that's him. Baisujin descended to the West Lake. She walked along the Sioux Causeway to the Bridge of Reflecting Waves and saw an old hawker with a green snake in his hand hawking. When the snake saw the white lady, it waved its head and tail and rolled down tears in its eyes. The white lady looked pity and bought the green snake. Baisujin carefully held the green snake to the lake, put it into the water, and suddenly a puff of green smoke burst from the lake. A girl dressed in green clothes and very beautiful walked out of the green smoke. This girl was the green snake transformed. Her name was Little Ching. Little Ching regarded by Sujin as her sister and accompanied her. The two walked and walked, from the inner lake to the outer lake, and from the outer lake around to the inner lake. By Sujin walked a few steps, stopped, looked east and west. Little Ching curiously asked her what she was looking for. Bai Sujin smiled and told Little Ching the riddle told by Nanji Shenwang. At noon, Bai Sujin and Little Ching came to the broken bridge and saw a crowd of people watching tricks around a circus. Little Ching looked around and suddenly exclaimed, Sister, sister, I found the tallest and shortest person. Bai Sujin asked hurriedly, Where is it? Little Ching pointed to the big willow tree, Look, there is a handsome young man sitting on the tree branch, watching the show in a trance. Bai Sujin asked in doubt, the person on the tree is not tall or short. How can he be the tallest and the shortest? Little Ching said, he squatted high on the tree, people passed under his crotch, isn't he the tallest? His shadow fell on the ground, and people walked over his head, isn't he also the shortest? You're right. It must be him. Bai Sujin was secretly delighted, the riddle of the old immortal is really hard to guess. The tallest and shortest person turned out to be an ordinary young man. I just don't know his name or surname, a stranger. How to call him down? Little Ching told Bai Sujin to secretly use magic. Soon, the sky was densely covered with birds and clouds, thunder rumbled, lightning flashed, and heavy rain fell. The circus hurriedly ended the show and the spectators scattered. The young man hurried down from the tree and rushed to the lake pier, called a small punt, and asked the boatman to row to Qingba Gate. As soon as the small boat set off, Bai Sujin and Little Ching shouted to take the boat on the shore. Seeing the two girls soaked from the rain, the young man asked the boatman to dock and let them get on the boat. After they entered the cabin, they thanked the young man and asked what his name was. The young man said, My surname is Su. When I was young, I met an immortal at Broken Bridge. Therefore, my father named me Su Xian. Bai Sujin and Little Ching looked at each other knowingly and nodded. Bai Sujin asked Su Xian where his family lived. Su Xian said, After my father passed away, I have been living alone in my sister's house at Qingba Gate. I usually help the medicinal material shop as a helper to make a living. Little Ching laughed when she heard this and clapped her hands, what a coincidence. My sister is also alone and helpless, drifting everywhere. It seems that you two are naturally a perfect match. Bai Sujin blushed and Su Xian lowered his head. After Bai Sujin and Su Xian met on the small boat in West Lake, they often dated. You like me, I like you, and soon the two of them got married. After getting married, the couple took Little Ching and moved from Hangzhou to Zhenjiang. There they opened a Baoha Tang pharmacy. After opening the medicinal material shop, Bai Sujin prescribed formulas and Su Xian prepared medicines to make many kinds of pills, powders, ointments and elixirs. Bai Sujin intended to treat the poor and hung a sign at the shop door saying free treatment for the poor, no charge. Every day, People came to buy medicine from morning till night, endlessly coming and going. Baoha Tang soon became famous. In the blink of an eye, it was the Dragon Boat Festival. Every family in Zhenjiang put reed flowers and wormwood at the door and sprinkled Rialgar wine on the ground. Children hung fragrant pouches around their necks and painted tiger heads on their foreheads. Beside the Jinshan Mountain, the Yangtze River also held dragon boat races. How will Su Xian react to Bai Sujin's imminent transformation into a white snake? The backstory is more exciting, please subscribe to our channel and we will update you the next episode right away.